just after 5am on Wednesday, April the 18th, 1906, the city of San Francisco was shaken to its foundations. Large swathes of the city were reduced to rubble in a matter of seconds. More than 3,000 people lost their lives in this earthquake and subsequent fire, which is still spoken of as one of the worst natural disasters in the history of the United States. Over the following century, major earthquakes have all too frequently brought death and destruction to many other cities around the world. What is also shocking about these natural hazards is that they are very hard to foresee. So why is it so difficult to predict when and where an earthquake will strike? To address this question, I've come along to San Francisco to meet some of the world's leading geoscientists. Well, you know, people have been looking at different things in terms of earthquake prediction for quite a while. For, you know, there was radon gas emission and that didn't work. Uh, there, were, uh, there was animal behavior and that didn't work. And in reality, uh, it's really, it's hard to find uh, something that's easily definable like that. The theory of plate tectonics was developed in the 1960s. It explains how the Earth's crust is divided up into major plates. Where these plates meet, they move relative to each other along fault zones. San Francisco is situated along the San Andreas Fault, where the North American plate slides past the Pacific plate at little over six centimeters a year. This is very slow, but over time, it causes huge amounts of stress to build up along the fault zone. And every so often, part of this fault gives way as the movement speeds up to several thousand kilometers an hour. Scientists have surveyed the geology along fault zones in search of signs that a major slip may be imminent. But so far, success has been very limited. The Earth's crust is an amazing, amazingly complex system. And uh, large earthquakes in the crust typically nucleate or start around 15 kilometers below the surface. And so as you go from the surface down to 15 kilometers, you have changes in physical properties of the rocks, increasing temperature, increasing pressure, changes in, in water content, changes in local stress. It's really, really complex and it varies with depth. It, where, it varies along the length uh, of a fall. So being able to find you know one precursor one thing that's common to this huge complexity uh, and will give you a signal that something large is impending is very very difficult but i mean look, looking to the future if you were to develop an earthquake prediction system i mean what kind of data might that provide well, I guess what you ideally would like to know is that Sunday afternoon at you know 4:13 p.m. Uh, in Berkeley, California, there's going to be a magnitude 6.8 earthquake on the Hayward Fault. That type of precision, I don't think, will ever be will ever be developed. Um, but that's what we'd like to know. While we are still a long way from being able to pinpoint precisely when and where the next big quake will strike. We can sometimes identify geographical regions that may be at risk. This is an area of interest to Aldo Zollo, an Italian researcher whose career in seismology was triggered by his own personal experience of an earthquake. My first experience uh, with an earthquake was during uh, the 1980 uh, earthquake uh, occurring in the Apennines, 100 kilometer away from, my, from the town where I lived. I remember that it was a Sunday afternoon. I uh, came back in my house and see a lamp holder hanging, uh, and I was uh, really uh, uh, panicking for that. And uh, the neighbor uh, from um, a close apartment came in my house and uh, was asking me what what is going, what was was going, what's going on, and I could not uh, explain. I said it's it's an earthquake, of course. I was at uh, that time a uh, uh, student of physics and this experience uh, uh, marked me and I decided to, uh, to, to, to specialize in seismology. With the current uh, knowledge about the earthquake uh, initiation process, we cannot predict 
in a deterministic manner, uh, the place and the time where an earthquake occurs. On the other hand, uh, earthquake forecasts is feasible and is actually applied uh, uh, worldwide. Uh, it consists in assigning a, a probability in the short term or in the medium term and the long term for an earthquake to occur in a, a delimited region. This kind of uh, prediction, which is called a forecast, is very useful because it uh, helps uh, local administrators, scientists, uh, civil protection managers to uh, deal with uh, the preparedness of the earthquakes and educate people to be prepared for the next earthquake. The energy released by an earthquake is measured on the Richter scale. The scale is logarithmic, so a magnitude 8 earthquake releases 10 times more energy than a magnitude 7 quake, and 100 times more energy than a magnitude 6. This animation compares the relative magnitudes of recent and historical earthquakes. In a rather chilling way, it puts into perspective the relative sizes of these earthquakes. Certain seismologists have been arguing for some time that the size and distribution of earthquakes can be explained with the help of applied mathematics. Many years ago, Gutenberg and Victor at Caltech in the 40s established that the magnitudes of the earthquake were related to the number. And this, if you take the dependence of the number of earthquakes greater than a magnitude, it has a power law dependence on the rupture area, which is a fractal. And this is basic, the basis of extrapolating from small earthquakes to large earthquakes. The earthquakes universally obey the scaling law for reasons that we don't fully understand from ter in terms of physics, but it's very successful, so in general, you can expect where you have 10 magnitude 5 earthquakes in a period of time, you expect to have one magnitude 6 and it takes 10 times as long. Well, we have, we have basically used this to establish a risk basis globally. And other people have done that. And in terms of risk, yes. But again, we, we could not have forecast when the Japanese earthquake would have occurred. Now, in that case, there was a well-defined magnitude 7 foreshock, but you don't know whether that's a foreshock until the main shock occurs. It could have been just a magnitude 7. And about 10% of earthquakes have well-defined for precursory foreshocks. In that case, it was a matter of days, and in general, it's a matter of hours to days to weeks. So those are warnings, but they only occur about 10% of the time. The search is on for a more reliable way of identifying geographical areas at risk. One approach showing real promise is to observe the Earth from space, to carefully monitor the crust for signs that stress is building up in the rocks. What's going on right now is that uh, systems of continuous recording, GPS units are being installed. Uh, in particular in the, in the U.S. and the western U.S., and these are real-time GPS units. So there may be a time when you can, you know, turn on your TV at night, and in addition to getting the weather report, you get the, you get the strain report. And maybe we'll be able to see where there are shifts in strain in the Earth's crust, and maybe that'll be a way to say, hey, look, let's keep our eye on uh, Seattle, Washington, because it looks like something might be building up. Now, that may not give us the precise prediction, but maybe it's, it gives us enough time for emergency uh, management groups, uh, for the public, just to begin to think a little bit more seriously about what they would do to prepare for an earthquake if one occurs. I mean, do you think um, you know, a system like that, do you think perhaps we'd see that within my lifetime? I mean, I'm nearly 30, so before I'm 80 in the next 50 years, 
Could we see the system? Well, I think we see the, the GPS system going in and being developed right now. And uh, I think within, within your lifetime, I think there's a good chance of seeing these kind of real-time stream maps. So it looks like our powers of predicting earthquakes are still fairly limited. But at just 50 years old, earthquake prediction is a field of science still in its infancy. And hopefully over the next 50 years, our understanding will improve and there could be ground-shifting developments ahead.